Hello friends. Today's topic is one of my favorites. It's all about motives and the power of understanding and discerning our motives, what that does for our lives and how we can teach our children about that. Um, so one of the ways I like to like exemplify this to my kids or help them start to exercise this ability is through media, like through movies or books that we're reading and we follow the characters and we kind of say, you know, what was this person's motive? Where did it lead? How can you tell? What kind of person did they become when they were with this motive? And you can see that in movies and books because they tell you, right? Like you can't really judge other people's motives. You don't really know. But um, books and movies, they, they, they're very obvious about it. So it makes it easy and it's a good exercise for us. And um, one of the ways, one of the movies I like to talk about this with or books it's, or a play, whatever you want to, or wherever you want to see it is Les Miserables. And um, I think it's a really powerful look at motives. Um, there's, you know, several different characters that just personify these different motives. For instance, there is Fontaine, who at first is driven by this desire to be loved, and then she's driven by fear after she gets betrayed, and you kind of see where that leads her and what kind of choices she makes because of that. And then there's Eponine, also driven by a desire to be loved, and where that leads her and what kind of person she becomes. There's that, I'm going to butcher these names, the Ternardiers, um, who are driven by wanting wealth and power, right? And what kind of people are they? And what? how does that look in a person? Um, there's the bishop who changed the life of Jean Valjean with his um, Christ-like love, his just motive of wanting to do good to another human being, and the ripple effect that that had on so many others. And of course, Jean Valjean is super interesting to look at because at first he's kind of driven by vengeance and this feeling of, of unfairness about life and what's happened to him. And, and because of the kindness and love of the bishop, his motives change. And you can see how that changes his life and how that changes the lives of so many others. And of course, Javert, who is driven by justice and making sure that the rules are followed and um, doing everything perfectly right. And where does that lead? So um, it's really fascinating. And you can do this with all sorts of movies, especially those that are, you know, where there's a theme of evil um, against good, or there's a journey theme. And Pilgrim's Progress just straight out tells you the motives. There's um, the, the characters' names are their motives. So that's really interesting as well. So um, I invite you to, to do that with your family sometime this week. Kind of maybe find a movie or talk about one you recently watched and talk about those motives and, and then how we can start discerning our motives. And so our challenge for today is to take the list that you wrote. If you haven't gotten there yet, there um, step number D on our morning connection is deciding your priorities, right? And so you've written a list of things that you kind of feel inspired to do and that you're feeling called to do. And then you, you number them. Which one do I want to do first? Which one do I feel most drawn to? And then I want you to look at your, your list that you wrote. And today's challenge is to look at the motive behind each thing that you have on there. Um, decide why do I feel a, a draw to do this? Why do I feel like this is important? And as you write your motive next to it, just cross anything off your list that isn't motivated by love. And so um, just be like, you know, am I doing this out of fear? Am I doing this out of like a sense of um, wanting to look good or whatever it may be? And you can cross those things off your list and try to just keep the things on your list that are motivated by a sense of love for God or of others or yourself um, that... Um, Christ-like love, right? The altruistic love that really wants the best for that person, for yourself, or people around you. Um, so um, that is a challenge for today. I And we're also going to, I'm going to put some printouts that you can print on the comments that you can start tracking your your habits. And so, so far we've developed a morning connection tool and you've decided how much of that you want to commit to doing. Um, if you want to do all of A, B, C, D, and E every day, or if you want to just do E, A, B or whatever it is, you've circled that and you're starting to practice that. And you've attached, if you want to, like if you feel like the morning connection tool is enough for now, that's fine. But if the inspired a habit you feel inspired to do for your mornings, then go ahead and start on that as well. Um, at, attach that to your morning connection and put it in a place. Today we did this with my kids and we all taped it somewhere where we knew we would see it often. So one of my kids taped it next to the fireplace where he reads his scriptures and another one taped it next to um, his bed. My daughter put it in her um, planner. I put my next to my, where I do my um, 
stuff in the morning, my desk. So just so we can start kind of remembering these things. So I'm kind of going behind a mountain and I'm worried that you're not going to be able to hear me. It's going to cut off. So I'll just come back up this way. Um, so that I'll go ahead and pin that below. And then I'll also, of course, um, put in the comments the reading that kind of explains this in a more clear way. Um, I'm doing both. Like I have the reading and I do these little videos because I know all of us learn differently. And some of us video is more um can we can absorb it better and some of us we prefer to read it i do think the reading is more clear because obviously i have more time to write it and i'm not speaking it but um you know do what feels best for you and um i hope you have a good rest of your day